So Brad, with the release of this video, we're now two for two for shitting on butterflies. Oh uh, yeah! Take that butterflies, you stupid flappy bastards. So today we're talking about a man who hunted butterflies with a shotgun. That man was of course Albert Meek, an Edwardian naturalist who hated nature so much he dedicated his life to shooting it in the face and then sending it to museums for other like-minded scientists to rub their balls just all over. <laughs> he sounds like a little bit of a dick. Uh, he was a bit of a dick because obviously even though he was a respected scientist who expanded our knowledge of the natural world and the many little fuzzy creatures that inhabit it, he did that by shooting them and sending them to museums for study. So on one hand, helped us better understand the world we live in, or another did so by shooting them at point blank range with a shotgun. Um. Meek was personally responsible for sending dozens, if not hundreds of specimens to the American and British Museums of Natural History, and has over 20 different kinds of bird and insect named after him, most of which he's credited with first discovering and then shooting directly in the face. He also owned, as you can see, quite a glorious moustache. This is like the fifth video now where you've mentioned a moustache. Do you have some kind of complex? <laughs> uh, no, it's a holdover from when I used to write for Cracked. There was an unwritten rule amongst the writers there that if a guy had awesome facial hair, it had to be mentioned in the article itself, either as a caption or just as part of the paragraph describing them. So everybody does that? Yeah, it was just a, it was just like this thing. If a guy has like glorious facial hair, you've got to mention it because obviously when you put a picture of them up, you need to... Draw attention, draw attention to, to the fact this guy had a fucking sick moustache. You may not have the looks, you may not have the dash, but you'll win yourself a girl if you've only got a moustache. I'm not overly fussed about moustaches, it's just a really funny thing to point out, because you can always make a lot of good jokes about a moustache. Like, I think the one I made about Ed Albert Meek is that some say he hunted it himself. <laughs> it's just a hilarious thing to write about a moustache. <laughs> can you actually grow facial hair? I cannot, but I do have to shave every single day because I take after my mum and my dad. My mum obviously being a woman has a very smooth face, but my dad, he has to shave on his way to work so that he doesn't have five o'clock shadow by the time he arrives at the office. That's how fast his facial hair grows. So I kind of get a similar thing, but it only grows here. Yeah, I, mine doesn't grow here. You think you've got the opposite to me? If we kiss, Brad, our mustache, <laughs> our facial hair would never touch. Just like Worf, just like Worf and Hitler. <laughs> you never seen that image? Is if Worf and Hitler kissed, then moustaches would never touch. <laughs> Come on, mate, we've got that. <laughs> Let's keep going. The story I'd like to tell you today concerns the time Meek went to the island of New Guinea at the turn of the 20th century on an expedition to find new and exotic creatures. On this expedition, Meek was astounded when he discovered what we know today as the Queen Alexandra's Birdwing, a butterfly with a wingspan of about a foot. Shit. Yeah, that's a big fucking butterfly, that, isn't it? Yeah. So that's like, what, this? That'd scare shit out. I've seen one in real life. Went to a butterfly house once. It's huge. I thought it was fake. I thought, oh, that's a cool toy. Like, for kids who like butterfly. I went to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> for a second, I won. What's that? That's not, that's not an insect. Nothing that, la nothing that large would ever survive. I love that your first reaction was, that looks like a nice toy, poke. Well, I, thought, oh, wait, I thought it was like a... You know what? on display yeah. like oh it's a well this is what the butterfly looks like so you can see the pattern of its wings or something like that so oh, they've got a bigger model of it so you can see it's like, no it's a fucking real giant butterfly and it makes the most awful noise yeah. ah, oh, no, no. it sounds like someone throwing a dish towel at you over and over again Just, oh god oh if only you had a shotgun only yeah i felt like i needed one giant terrifying <laughs> Meek, being a man of science, immediately recognised the value of such a specimen and set about trying to capture one. However, there was a problem. What was the problem? Uh, the problem was that, due to its massive size, the Queen Alexandra's Birdwing could basically fly wherever the fuck it wants, and it was most comfortable flying high above the canopies of trees. And Meek was really frustrated because he never ever saw one fly below 100 foot in the air. So I want, they never really land on the ground, because obviously they're so massive and so easy to spot, they're immediately set upon by predators. So they prefer to fly in the canopies of trees where nothing can really get to them. Except for birds, obviously, but birds don't want to something so big. So his butterfly net was fucking useless. Yeah, so if you're picturing a guy at the bottom with a butterfly net, it's going... 
fuck's sake. <laughs> I even brought the big one. I was going to say, I imagine it would be useless anyway because he'd arrive like trying to catch a butterfly specimen. Oh, it looks like, like Spongebob with a jellyfishing <laughs> thing. And it's like a little tiny net like that and he looks up and he sees this like, foot wide butterfly. And he's like, what am I supposed to do with this? <laughs> the thing is, well, he saw it really high in the air and you could see it. So he probably didn't know exactly how big it was until he actually captured one. So you just saw it really high in the air and went, that's interesting, that was pretty fucking big. Compared to the birds that are around here, he just shoots it down, his lands on him. Yeah. He shoots it down like a bed sheet falls on him. <laughs> like his Mothra or something like that. <laughs> I don't know about you watching at home, but it's probably a good thing that this butterfly decides to fly as high as it does. Because I can't imagine how terrifying it'd be if those things flew at face level. <laughs> Like, that is too big for any insect because it's bigger than your face. And when it gets to be bigger than your face, that's too fucking big. It's like when they start measuring the size of spiders in comparison to dinner plates, that's when you know the spider's too fucking big. Because for some reason, that's always the comparison they use, isn't it? It's like, oh, how big is, like, the Great Huntsman? So don't put pictures of these behind me as well because I don't want to see spiders behind me. <laughs> well, people say, oh, the, um, the, like, the... Huntsman spider, how big is it? All about the size of a regular dinner plate. Don't say that. This dinner plate's like this big. I don't want to know how big a spider's big as a dinner plate. So that's too big for an insect and it should not live. And I'm glad that Meek agreed with me. Suffice to say, Meek failed to capture an example of a species using traditional methods, which mostly involved him stood staring slack jawed at the sky, trying to avoid being covered in butterfly shit. Eventually, Meek became so frustrated that no butterfly would descend below 100 feet, he decided to just grab a shotgun and began firing it wildly into the air. Was he not worried that he was just going to explode this butterfly into a million little pieces? He was, so he took the precaution of using shotgun shells with extra fine buckshot in them that were originally designed for shooting really tiny birds like hummingbirds without like damaging them too much for like obviously specimens to send to museums. So if he didn't think he was enough of a dick already, he also used to shoot tiny little birds like this big with a shotgun. Which is like, but yeah, that's fair, isn't it? That's the man versus nature I want to see. Tiny hummingbird this big versus man with shotgun. It's not just that he's got a shotgun, it's the fact that he shoots little birds. He's got special ammunition, ammunition just for shooting tiny adorable birds. If anything, it shows that he was committed to murdering a diverse range of animals. Because in my head, he just opened up his pack and went, hmm, oh, the book shot for killing the, uh, the peacocks. The bookshot for killing the crows, the bookshot for killing seagulls. Oh, here we go, the hummingbird bookshot. It's a bullet like this big, and he just puts it into a tiny little shotgun. Oh my god. But he did manage to get uh, Queen Alexandra's bird wing by just firing wildly into the air, and eventually he hit one, killed it, it fell down, he got his specimen, and he sent it to the British Museum, where it stays to this day. And you know what the best part is? Yeah. That specimen is still there, and it's still got the bullet holes in it. <laughs> Do you know what the even better thing is? This isn't the only time in his life that Meek did this because he's also responsible for being the first person to capture the Goliath birdwing butterfly, another equally as giant massive butterfly that he also hunted with a shotgun and also sent to the British Museum and he's also still there today with bullet holes in it. What I like to imagine is that, Joe, you get those rooms that people have in their house when they hunt and it's got all like the zebra head on the wall, the rhinoceros, the elephant. You go into his house and it's just like random insects and tiny adorable birds. These are the animals I've hunted. The dangerous game that I've fought. It's like a hummingbird. He's got like a mounted rhinoceros beetle head. There's old one eye over there. Took me three weeks to hunt that bastard. And it's like, really? Are you being fucking serious? And like, you look, turn around, like a caterpillar mounted to the wall and goes, oh yes, quite the foe this one was. I like to think that he, the reason it took him so long to catch them all is because he had to invent a different bullet for every single time. For every type. single one, because couldn't you just pick it up and go, ah, well that takes all the fun out of it, doesn't it? <laughs> that takes the thrill of the hunt, and he's like hunting a caterpillar, and he's like on a leaf, and you see him behind, dressed like a caterpillar, sneaking up behind it, and just pulls out a shotgun and blows it away. So when it just explodes to a big cloud of paste, and he goes, don't use elephant rounds. <laughs> Just the idea that this guy's reaction wasn't like to just like sneak like climb a tree. That's too dangerous. Now! <laughs> you know what's not dangerous though? Firing a gun into the air at random. What a hero. I like to imagine as well the first time that he did it, he fired a shotgun in the air and then like a monkey fell out the tree and he's like, for fuck's sake. Every time he fired a different animal, a different falls, animal out. falls out. This is not what I was after. <laughs> So 
So yeah, if you feel sad today, just remember that there was a guy at the turn of the 20th century whose first reaction to seeing this giant butterfly was to pull out a shotgun and open fire. <laughs> what a fucking prick. Ugh. What do you think would be the most ridiculous animal someone could like claim to have hunted? Like, I think being able to say I hunted this butterfly is kind of bad. A snail. <laughs> snail hunting. Well, that actually happened, didn't it? Did you not see that news story that happened? What, someone hunted a no, snail? they found a snail that shell went in the opposite direction to all of the snails. So they were trying to find it a uh, mate. I think it was called Jeremy? And they tried to find it a mate, and when they found it uh, a mate to make it like to continue this line of snails with weird concentric shells, I think both of the mates they got for it had like, sex with each other. <laughs> but yeah, that happened. That's a true story. That's a thing happened. It's just it want the fact that they were looking all over the world to try and find a mate for this snail, and that when they did, the mates had sex with each other. It's like, oh man, that's just getting denied on a level you can't even comprehend. What do you think would be the stupidest thing to hunt then? The stupidest thing to hunt. Yeah. I think it'd just be something that's just like so easy to find. So I think if it's just something like a donkey. <laughs> I'm generally opposed to hunting in all forms because I think it's not really fair on the animal. And me and a friend of mine who come to the agreement that we're perfectly fine with you hunting any animal on earth provided you hunt it with your bare hands. Because at that point you just want it more. Because there's just something about the idea of someone with like a high powered rifle hunting something. The example that immediately springs to mind of like the perfect encapsulation of why I think hunting is just so fucking stupid is this show I was watching about like people who live in Alaska and there's a woman who hunts wolves for a living she sells the pelts and you see her talking to camera like basically massaging her own ego like yeah hunting wolves is so dangerous these things could kill me at any point it's just me versus the wolf it's the truest test of whether I, like man's grit to survive and it shows what she does. And she sat three miles away with a high-powered rifle, just shooting wolves one after the other and going, this is tough. I get it, you're in the middle of the fucking Arctic, so yeah, that's tough. But you're like shooting it from a mile of fucking way. She goes, yeah, but like, if the wolves smell me, they'll run away. She goes, you sat a mile away with a rifle. You've n at no risk to yourself whatsoever. <laughs> and she's like, yeah. It's, and that's what gets me about people who hunt. And they try and make it out like it's this thing of like, oh, it's man versus nature. It's like, well, it's not really. It's like when you see people like, was it Duck Dynasty or whatever? And their thing is they hunt ducks mm. and they hide in blinds. So they're in a duck blind wearing full camouflage with like th four of them with shotguns using duck calls to hunt them. And they shoot them and go, ah, those, those ducks, they're wily creatures. No, they're not. They're fucking ducks. You have every possible advantage a person could have. One, you've got a gun, you're completely invisible, you're sat in a blind so you can't be seen. And they've got the cheek to sit there and go, yeah. This is what real hunting is. This like separates the men from the boys. <laughs> it's like, no, it fucking does. You could not have more advantage. If they were sneaking out and strangling ducks with their bare hands, I'd have more respect for them. But no, if, like, if you're saying like, oh, I'm a, I'm a trapper, like, I'm hunting for bushmeat and killing gorillas. It's like if you could beat that gorilla up with your bare hands, fucking, you know what, you deserve it. You wanted it more at that point. But when they're sat there with like assault rifles or shotguns or from a mile away, hidden in full camouflage, covered in all this shit and going, this is, this is the true test. I'm at such a risk. Yeah. It could get to me at any point. Yeah, because it can run a mile the time it can take you to shoot it. It's like you've got the deck so heavily stacked in your favour, you haven't got a fucking chance. It's ridiculous. 